let's look at some examples of using Ohm's law to find electrical quantities in simple circuits. Here is a simple circuit consisting of a battery or voltage source connected by conductors or wires to a resistor or resistive load. The voltage of the power source is 100 volts and the resistor has a value of 5 ohms. What is the current flowing through this circuit? Well, to remember Ohm's law, we want to find here current, so we need the formula for current or intensity of current, I. If we cover up I in the Ohm's law memory aid, V over IR, if we cover up I, that gives us V to over R, or we'd say I equals V divided by R. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. So in this case, we have 100 volts for the voltage and 5 ohms for resistance. That would be 100 volts divided by 5 ohms, which gives us 20 amperes. So 10, 100 volts would push 20 amperes of current through a 5 ohm resistive load. Look at another example. Again, the same circuit, but this time we know what the current is, 3 amperes, and the resistance in the circuit is 10 ohms. We don't want to know what is the voltage, V or E, across this circuit. Remember, sometimes people use E for voltage, and other times the symbol V is used, so don't let that confuse. Here we're using V primarily. So the formula that we need from Ohm's law would be, according to our Ohm's law memory aid, if we cover up V, that gives us IR, or voltage equals current times resistance. V equals I times R. And that is 3 amperes times 10 ohms, 30 volts. So 30 volts is pushing the 3 amperes of current through the 10 ohm resistor. We now know the voltage of the battery is 30 volts. Again, the same circuit. This time we know the voltage of 100 volts that is pushing 2 amperes of current through an unknown resistance. What is the resistance in this circuit? Again, using Ohm's law, the Ohm's law formula for resistance is V over I, or R equals V divided by I. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. So that would be 100 volts divided by 2 amperes, or 50 ohms. So for a 100 volt battery would push 2 amperes of current through a 50 ohm resistor. Again, the same circuit, but this time we know the voltage and the resistance. What is the current flowing through this circuit? Ohm's law tells us that current, I, is V over R. I equals V divided by R. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. Our voltage is 5 volts divided by our resistance of 20 ohms. 5 divided by 20 is 0 0.25 or 1 quarter. That would, we could say that that is 1 quarter of an ampere. However, we might want to convert that to milliampers. In fact, it is conventional practice to express values of current less than one amp as milliampers. So we would convert the ampers to milliampers. If we consult our metric prefix scale, we see that amperes, which has no metric prefix or none, is 10 to the zero power and we want to go to milli, which is 10 to the negative 3, so we're going to go a difference of three, pla three powers of 10, or three decimal places, three places, and that's from a larger to a smaller prefix. It's going to go to the right, so we're going to move the decimal place three places to the right. 
So we would uh, start out with our decimal point being here, and we need to move it three places to the right. One, two, three. And in order for there to be a decimal point there, we have to, to put another zero in. So the decimal point will move to there now. And uh, that will no longer be amperes anymore. That would be milliamperes. So we'd have to change our units there as well and convert that to milli and make that be milliamperes. So I'll move the A over here and write in a little M so that we have milli. So that's milliamperes. So now our value is no longer 0.25 amperes, but our value is equal to 250. Actually, it's the same thing, but we're just expressing it in a different way. It's now 250 milliamperes. So we could say it that way instead of amperes, and that would be a conventional way to do that. Let's look at one more example. Again, we have the same circuit, but this one, we have a known current and we have a known resistance. Our current flow is 100 milliampers. Our resistance is 10 mega ohms. And we want to know what is the voltage, V or E, across this circuit. Again, V and E are the same thing, so I'm just reminding us of that fact that sometimes it is expressed as E rather than V. Again, we need to recall our Ohm's Law formula that will give us voltage. We cover up V, we get IR, or V equals I times R. Voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. All right, and therefore we have our current 100 milliampers. We want to multiply that by the resistance of 10 mega ohms. Now it is tempting to simply multiply 100 times 10, which would be 1000. But that would not be correct because we need to consider the metric prefixes. And in order to do that properly with Ohm's Law, Ohm's Law would like to have everything in base units. In other words, volts, ohms, and amperes. So milliampers and mega ohms and things like that need to be converted to the base unit. So for example, on the milli here, we need to look at our metric prefixes. Milli is 10 to the negative 3. We want to convert it to just straight amperes, which is none, no prefix, 10 to the 0. So it's three places difference, 10 to the negative 3 to 0, and that's three places to the left. So we're going to move our decimal plate three places to the left. So our decimal point starts out being here, and we're going to move it one, two, three places, so it puts it right there. So now it's 100 milliamps. I'm sorry, 100.1 amps. 0.1 amps. 100 milliamps becomes 0.1 amps. No longer is there a milli. Okay, the same thing with the resistance value. It has mega ohms, but again, Ohm's law would like to work with the base units. So we need to uh, convert that. So we're going to go from mega to just ohms. From mega ohms to ohms. Mega is 10 to the 6 power. Ohms with no prefix would be considered 10 to the 0. That's 6 places, and so we need to move the decimal place three, 6 places over. So I'm going to make, and in order to do that, I'm going to need to make a little room here. Move it over, and I want to make that be ohms now, not mega ohms. So get rid of the mega there completely. And then our metric prefix chart tells us that we're going from 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 0. That's 6 places. So we're going to then put in our decimal point here where it starts out at and it's going to go six places one two three four 
five, six. So I need to, I need, in order to do that, I'm going to have to put in 10, I mean, six more zeros. Three, four, five, six more zeros. And our decimal point will end up right there. So what is that value? Well, that is a value of 10 million. 10 million ohms. So we can uh, express that then. Our calculation then becomes, instead of 100 milliampers times 10 mega ohms, our expression becomes 0 0.1 amperes times 10 million ohms. That would be the correct values to put into Ohm's law. If we multiply 0 0.1 times 10,000, we get 1 million. So that's our answer. 1 million is the value of the resistance of that, re I'm sorry, the uh, 1 million is not ohms, is it? It's volts. Get rid of that ohms out of there. Ah. And put in a V, right? We want a V in there, not a, that's 1 million volts. Got to be careful about units, because that would not be a correct answer. So that's the answer, 1 million volts. That would requ we would require 1 million volts, or we could say 1 mega volts. 1 mega volts is required to push 100 milliamps of current through 10 mega ohms. Now again, we could just use our calculator to help us calculate this, because the calculator can simplify some calculations. Now I, uh, it would enter that then as a scientific number. And it looks like I did threw my calculator away. Let me get it back for us here. There we go. And our calculator uh, is nice because we don't have to worry about prefixes. We can just type in the values as scientific numbers. And we want to multiply the current times the resistance. And the current is 100 milli. So we type in 100 milli. Again, milli is 10 to the third power. So that would be 100 E to the, excuse me, negative 3. So it's negative 3, not, not 3. Negative 3. 100 E to the minus 3. That is milli. And then we multiply that, press multiply, and we need to, to multiply that by 10 mega ohms. So we type in 10 mega. Mega is 10 to the 6, so that's 10 e to the 6. If we press equal, again, we get 1 million. So there we let the calculator do the work for us. We didn't have to uh, even worry about moving the decimal point if we let the calculator do it. So that's one of the beauties of a scientific calculator. If we use that exponent key, the exp or ee or 10 to the x key, whatever, calc whatever your calculator has, you now scientific calculators have those have the ability to handle scientific numbers and also metric prefixes because that's really what metric prefixes are. Well, thank you for watching.